On a daily basis, the human body is constantly consuming massive amounts of oxygen. Our daily demands of living and sleeping require that our body be fully functioning, converting oxygen into carbon dioxide. But what happens when we need to go beyond normal oxygen consumption? Luckily through the use of metabolic cots, we're able to measure a person's VO2 max. A person's ability to utilize oxygen efficiently during high demand exercise. In order to measure one's oxygen consumption, expired air needs to be collected. To do so, we must assemble the head and mouth piece. The focus of demonstration. We have the inhalation port, two one-way valves to prevent backflow of air, the valve base where all the various components of the mouthpiece are assembled, a spit catch for all the saliva excreted from the subject. We have a cap to ensure no air leakage. An exhalation port for air to enter gas analysis. And finally the mouthpiece which shall be inserted into the subject's mouth. It is important when handling a human subject to wear proper protective gloves. This prevents the spread of germs. Improper handling of rats on top of not wearing gloves back in the Middle Ages led to the tragedy known as the Black Plague. So it is important to remember, always wear your glove. Now to put all the components together. You start off with the base and put a one-way valve pointing in towards the base's center. Notice the one-way valve's membrane will be pointing inwards. Screw on the inhalation port. Put the membrane facing the opposite way now with this one-way valve. The exhalation port gets tightened on. Spit catch for the saliva. The cap. Notice the path in which air is flowing through the inhalation port and out through the exhalation port into gas collection. Remember to do some last minute calculations and make sure that everything is airtight. Demonstration 2. Placement of the headpiece. It is important that the subject understand what he is about to go through for the testing procedure. The headpiece and the mouthpiece are quite uncomfortable, especially under strenuous exercise. Make sure you give him a friendly hello and show him to the proper positioning of the headpiece on his body. And don't forget when working with a person to put on your gloves. The piece is placed, secured. You want a nice tight fit to make sure it doesn't jumble off during the run. Next, the mouthpiece is inserted inside the mouth.
And finally, it all is assembled. Now if you don't have a rubber band, don't worry, you probably remember making rubber bands back in your grade school chemistry class. Make sure you dissolve your polymer solution within hydrochloric acid and agitate within a graduated cylinder thoroughly. Agitation is required for the reaction to take place in the incubator. Sit carefully in the incubator and let sit for an hour. Meantime, it is a good idea to review your notes for the protocol to come up. Once it's ready, carefully take out the cylinder from within the incubator. The acid is neutralized so nothing would be harmful. It may be a struggle to get the last band out. And as you notice, there are two kinds. We have the differentiated and undifferentiated. We're tossing out the undifferentiated and taking the fully mature band to use for our procedures. Ensure proper tightness and do some last minute checks. Nose piece Everything is set. It's a tight head, mate. Demonstration 3. Gas Systems Calibration. Proper calibration is very important for a VO2 max test. Most computer programs are very user-friendly and will guide the user. The, the gas is turned on and this will be used as the sound. A large pneumatic syringe will be used for the room air calibration. The scientists ensure that the tubing will be proper. Orientation of ends is very important. Some more calculations. Appropriate air tube behavior is paramount. Finally hook it up. And the pumping begins. The scientists maintain a steady pace. And a constant rhythm.